I know what you're thinking. Care and why have you brought us to a load of old rubble? Well, it's interesting rubble. Liverpool City Council are well known for dumping rubbish in places. I've told you before about Tobacco Road at Formby Beach. Liverpool City Council allowed the British Nicotine Company to dump a load of tobacco leaves on the beach and cover it up with sand. They used to extract all the nicotine out of the tobacco and you'd just be left with wet tobacco leaves. And they dumped 20,000 tonnes a year for about 20 years, from the 1950s to the 1970s. You might be aware of something called the Williamson Tunnels. A man called Joseph Williamson dug an elaborate set of tunnels underneath all his properties in the sandstone at Edge Hill. Nobody quite knows why he did it, apart from he just wanted to. A lot of people think he did it just to give working men a day's pay. But when he died, Liverpool City Council filled in all the tunnels with rubbish and rubble. And it's only in recent years that they've started excavating them to see what was going on, and they find all kinds of interesting things. So why did they dump all this rubble here? Well, we'll forgive them for this one. During the Second World War, Hitler concentrated a lot of his bombing raids on cities with ports. And if you think about it, if you want to win a war, cutting off import and export would be a good way to do it. You can't get food in, and you can't get exports out, so you can't earn any money. So the port of Liverpool was bombed heavily. And in 1941, for one week between May the 1st and May the 7th, Liverpool had 200 bombing raids in one week. And that destroyed 12,000 buildings and left 20,000 people without a home. And when all those buildings were destroyed, they were left with mountains upon mountains of rubble. And nowhere really to put it. They couldn't leave it where it was because they needed to rebuild all the buildings and build the houses for people to live in. So they sent some of the rubble off as ballast in the bottom of ships off to all kinds of different locations around the world. But most of it came here to Crosby Beach. And in fact a lot of the coastal park here at Crosby is built on top of all that rubble. And it's only these bits next to the sea that are exposed. And it's not just bricks from terraced houses that you see here. It's giant stone lintels from banks. And engravings off churches and tombstones from graveyards. And mixed in with all that is household bric-a-brac, old prams, kids' toys. You can see the tiles from people's floors and bathrooms. It's a mudlark's paradise. You spend about five days going through it finding all kinds of interesting things. At the end of the war, they didn't have the money to move all the rubble. There wasn't the budget for it, not to rebuild a lot of things. So it all just stayed here. And over time, the sea's rounding off all the bricks. And every time the tide comes in, it exposes something new and interesting.
This is Formby Beach and I'm on something called the Asparagus Trail which goes round where they had all the asparagus fields here in Formby. I bet you didn't know they grew asparagus here. Beard him. Asparagus was introduced to the UK by the Romans and they found it in the Middle East. In fact there's carvings inside the pyramids of asparagus sprouts. And because British people are so cute when the Romans came over and told them what it was called in the thick Italian accents, the British people thought that they called it sparrow grass, as in the bird. In fact, Samuel Pepys writes in his diaries of 1668 that he had a hundred of sparrow grass and he paid one shilling and eight pence. Apparently, he got a little bit of salmon with it, which you would expect for one shilling and eight pence. That was quite a lot of money. Formby asparagus was apparently the creme de la creme of asparagus. And if you think about the growing conditions here at Formby, if it's a plant that comes from the Middle East and fares better in sandy soil, well then the dunes at Formby would be perfect for that. Formby asparagus is the type of asparagus they would have eaten first class on the Titanic, or the type that Queen Victoria would have had at Royal Galas, or the opening of Grand Buildings. I bet you wish you were at the captain's table on the Titanic eating fine asparagus with Jack and Rose well let me just take the shine off it a little bit the type of fertiliser they used was called night soil some of you may already know what night soil is I've told you that Liverpool City Council like to dump things in places well dump was the operative word all the people in the city of Liverpool eating the big pans of scouse and having eight pints of Guinness a night created quite a lot of night soil and this was in the days before flushing toilets only those people in first class on the Titanic would have flushing toilets at home normal people had a toilet in the back garden and men on a cart would come and empty it out for you and Liverpool City Council used to put it on trains and bring it to the fields of Formby and Freshfields or not so fresh fields as it would turn out and they would use it as fertiliser on all the asparagus that's not how they do it today don't worry mm -hmm. 